Hello, I'm Entrism, and welcome back to This is the Police. Uh, stuffed toys purchased at orphanage found toxic, hers crash into remnants and their survivors, and the price of alcohol to increase by 60%. So all in all, not a good day. We also have to drive a terrible, terrible car. <sighs> Armstrong and Simonetti got food poisoning and expect to be in the hospital for the next five days. Both of them? I'm too tired. I can hardly walk straight. Can I go home? Uh, Mole. No. We've got something special lined up for you, Mole. Uh, and we will, we will try another song. People have been like, you should play another song, you should play another song. A lot of people not understanding how copyright works as well. But, uh, we'll try another song. This one. Dud meets Bob. Mmm. Oh, Bud meets Bob, not Dud. Okay. Prosecutor's office. Don't forget to prepare the upcoming meeting with the prosecutors. It's tomorrow. Okay, sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I would like... An extra officer. Yes, please. Actually, I should have gone for money with your salary. An elderly woman reported that children wearing hoodies have painted rude words on nearby monument. I wouldn't just send one person, because to catch all the kids, you need more officers. Like, if there's multiple, you know, you need to be able to catch them all, you need more officers. But sure, uh, we're not going to send you, because there's something special waiting for you. So, Sandy, go. A little bit short today, because of all the food poisons and the deaths and stuff. Suicide threat. Teenage girl slipped past the skyscraper guards and found her way onto the roof. She's now standing on the edge. A guard called the police and said that he was afraid to approach the girl. Uh, he could tell the girl is serious. Oh, God. Um... I'll send these two. Can't send Kochi. She's got a job to do. A trucker saw a teenage boy climb over the safety fence in the middle of the bridge. The driver stopped and tried to talk to the boy, but the boy became hysterical, screaming, Don't come any closer or I'll jump. Okay, that's that's it. That's all, all the cops. I don't have anyone to send for you. I really want to send someone. <sighs> they, they took a big rig along to the sand and carted it over a cliff. Good job. Actually, I can send Kochi. Oh, I'm thinking I needed to keep Mole separate. Sorry, it's Kochi I can send. I shouldn't send Kochi to this, but you know, she's going to be disgraced anyway. Investigation trap. We got a numbers call from a bad connection. Sound like someone found a corpse in the forest. Okay, so let's go to investigations. No, not frames. I would love to do frames, but no. Uh, detectives. Remove you from the case. Mole, can you come have a look at this? I mean, someone said something about a body. Um, you know, go over there, just just have a look at it. It's probably just some homeless person that's just wandered out into the uh, the edge of the town. Um, won't be anything important. I'm sure he manage. Well done, Sandy. Offender caught, and we handcuffed them. Yeah, that's great job there with that suicide threat. Again. Not sure we fully grasp how to deal with suicide threats here. Hit and run. Pedestrian saw a dark pickup careening into the sidewalk and hit two teenage skateboarders. It didn't even slow down. Just smeared the poor kids and kept driving straight ahead. The drunk freak. Oh, okay. Yeah, we should send some people. It's fairly close as well. Animal assault. Received a rambling call from a man who claimed is uh, returned to work from home to find a huge cat sitting on his doorstep, crouching rage attack. It was growling like a Tyrannosaurus, stuttered the victim. Hmm. Okay, we'll send... Oh, come on. You're back, aren't you? There we go. Samdi and Mail. And we'll send Vandal over here. Oh no! Mole's dead! Oh, this is terrible! Whatever will we do? Okay, we need to hire someone for a shift. Um, and we need to hire a new uh, detective as well when we can. 
So, A shift. Uh, Ryan Underwood. Sure. Come join us on A shift. We're the best shift. Can't really do much about Fleet Street. Pension looked at when I saw a sort of crowd of naked people running through the streets. She didn't know what to think and called the neighbor who had witnessed the outrage spectacle. The woman called the police and demanded immediate explanation. I like the fact this, this old woman is like, Barbara, did you see all the naked people? I did. I don't know what they're doing out there. Oh, I thought it was just my pills again. I'll call the police. Hello there. Uh, hello, uh, 911. What can I do? Um, why have you got naked people running down the street? Oh, uh, unfortunately, it looks like I'll just have to respond with one person. Hopefully, the paddy wagon will make up for it, but I might have these two back. It's close. Crap. I'm refusing. Did you manage it? Yeah, you're good officers. Okay, how quickly can you be back? I think you can be back in time. I think you're going to be back in time. Three, two... Yeah, keep Sandy on call. Ah, uh, no. Um, Mr. Vario wants to invite you along to the party. In fact, he insists you come. I don't have the people. And also, like, if I'm coming on to the party, surely, like, I'm one of these three. I guess maybe I'm just implied. Um, the point is, they're taking a run at Sands Ranch, and I don't have the cops to send. It's just an ordinary name as Pet, posing no threat to anyone I thought it would be. Maybe I shouldn't have gone, but... I like to I like to check all the things out, make sure they're all above board. Yeah, managed to sort out the disorderly conduct. Lovely, all the naked people in the back of the van, like just like a meat grinder. I guess Miss Sanders leaving Freeburg, but some punks somehow learned the row, uh, the route, and for an ambush, it's turning into a shoot, and we need any help we can get. I don't have the people. Might eventually have the people. I don't right now. You want help over here, won't you, Varga? Fine. I should probably keep track of who I keep sending to these dodgy ones. Three! Three! No! If I keep track of who I keep sending to the dodgy things, maybe it's one of those as the informant. However, Kochi was an informant. And it did tell me that guys killed Everts. And also, Kochi wasn't sent to most of those because Kochi's really awesome and I kept Kochi on proper crimes rather than going out to these. Unlawful assembly. People wearing white caps have gathered outside City Hall, disbanding a return to the good old days of segregation and slavery in Freeburg. The crowd chanted, White is right! Some were seen to carry revolvers. Oh. Okay. Supermarket manager reports that an elderly man deliberately overturned the vegetable tailors refusing to pay for damages. He tried to escape, but still managed to detain the offender. We'll send one person to that, who I'm going to have to send soon, which is a shame. Oh, God. No, I've got... I've got limited time. Okay. Um. Crap. I need to send two people to this. I'm sorry. It keeps being like, no new frames found for the theft, and I'm really wanting some frames for both of them. Because I can't work out what's wrong. By the way, they're marching on City Hall at a very interesting time of day. Uh, more reinforcements? Sure. Vandal's tired, which is why I'm not sending Vandal. It's like, oh, we're going to march on the city. Uh, to be fair, it's probably when the pubs closed that they were like, you know what? Let's go keep playing this city all. I don't know why they had that voice. Oh, my God. We should totally go complain the city hall. Like, that's closer. We got them. Don't worry about it. Non-automatic weapons. Proceed uh, to the police station. 
Oh, everything's above board here. Don't worry about it. Oh, God. The war is over. The tyrannical rule of the Sands family, which has lasted for generations, has come to an end. The criminal world of Freeburg is transformed beyond recognition. How exactly will it all end up? That's for Vickers Farga to decide. <gasps> I don't know how that happened. I don't think I gave him enough points to put them over the top, did I? I don't think I did. I Honestly, I'm not sure how this war worked out, which is very annoying because I kind of... They threatened me with I would get killed. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I swear I didn't do this, but whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, I will declare you dead. I really want to declare Everts dead. Order to work tomorrow. <laughs> Everts, you should definitely come to work tomorrow. I, I, I was just doing an impression of a corpse, and then I realized you can't hear my impression of a corpse because it's silent. Everts, you missed work again. Everts? Give me your gun and your badge! Okay. Zoo animals starving. Toilet stolen from City Hall. Freeburg host to greatest lasagna in history. Give it to the animals. There we go. Problem solved. I don't know how to solve the toilet problem. Portaloos? Mr. Boyd, how do you feel about the Black Rats movement? I support it. All men are created equal, and Blacks are no exception. Probably shouldn't refer to them as Blacks, Mr. Boyd. Why did you send your officers to a peaceful Black rally? Uh, we received a noise complaint. The noise complaint has practically shut down the mayor's office. Do you think that the participants at the rally, uh, peaceful rally, posed a threat to others? Do you think the participants at the peaceful rally, she's kind of leading me there. Definitely not. There were upstanding residents of our community who were decided by political inaction. In recent weeks, large scale protests have rocked Freeburg. First, feminists marched in Desire Park and today the blacks gathered outside City Hall. Uh, that wasn't today, but sure. What do you think is the reason there's been such a rise in civic activism in this city? Ooh. Activist journalism. The media is chasing ratings instead of reporting the news. Uh, newspapers and TVs are completely out of control. They describe minor mistakes as catastrophes and incite the people to take power into their own hands. That's not exactly what I meant, but okay. Mr. Boyd, are any of your friends, friends black? I don't have any friends. I had friends back in the academy, but in my position it's difficult to maintain good relationships with people. Uh, did you give the order to suppress the protest by force? Coachy did. In a police storage locker, one belonging to an officer, we found some white Camellia publications along with a diary in which uh, he wrote, she wrote about the return to segregation and the eventual destruction of black society. It is this officer who incited his, her colleagues to violence against the black protesters. Drunk student falls from fifth floor window, injured. This fall, record rainfall in Freeburg. Accident in the reservoir. Water runs out in two days. I should, what, didn't we just have papers? And then we had that. And then we had papers again. Maybe I was just off work yesterday. Oh. Okay. Ooh, a badge. Mile, you've done really well. Uh, I want two leaders who aren't my going to do dodgy things. It's a bit of waste to get the dodgy person going to do big crime. You know when a police chief really feels his power? When he hires and fires people? When he throws folks in jail? When he's bossing everyone around all morning? No, there's no power there. Just bureaucratic red tape. Like directing traffic. Not that it's all bad. No, I feel it the most when people come to me with accusations. Accusations happen outside the law. They don't need to be rational or supported by evidence. They don't petition justice in the careful words of legal formality. No, an accusation is a personal cry, full of resentment or envy, a defeated moan or an angry howl. The accuser rarely imagines you'll share their resentment, their envy, their hatred. 
No, but they do imagine that your love of power is so strong that you'll leap to decide the fates of others, happy just to take someone's word for the facts. Businessmen accuse the gangsters, the gangsters blame our public figures, public figures denounce politicians, the politicians point to the businessmen. When it comes to accusation, there's only one rule. Don't aim too high. If you overestimate your own importance, then complaining can cost you your life. So choose the easier path. Exaggerate as far as you can, and try to make your plea sound as sad and pathetic as possible. The accusation I received today sure didn't fit the normal mold. He'd taken down the family that had ruled Freeburg for three generations. Within a few weeks of his ascension, Vickis Varga had already made it clear. He liked this town and he was here to stay. Anyone with an objection would die. According to the letter I'm holding, the apparent suicide of Hikaru Moto, coach of the Dragon's Lair Martial Arts Club, was actually staged by Connell O'Toole, a lieutenant of the Warg Mafia family. O'Toole, under the protection of the Wargs, organizes illegal fights where anything goes. He recruits fighters, takes bets, and even makes a showing in the ring from time to time. Once this huge Scotsman found himself in the ring with Hikaru Moto, O'Toole figured he could easily defeat the skinny Japanese man and put a lot of money on himself. But Hikaru Moto opened up with such punishing damage that O'Toole had to give in right away. O'Toole might have given Moto the win that night, but a few days later he showed up with a gun at the man's house and demanded his money back. Hikaru refused, but O'Toole beat him until he showed him where the winnings were hidden. O'Toole then shot Hikaru Moto in the head scrawled out a quick suicide note and left it next to the body with a gun. He was beaten and we thought Looking it was Looking at the photo what? with the red-headed thug, it's hard to imagine he was beaten by a fellow half his size. And why would he kill him anyway? O'Toole could have just beaten the crap out of Moto, taken the money and walked. It's not like his victim could go to the police complaining about the theft of illegal proceeds. There is something wrong with this story. Yeah, also the fact that he was beaten and we thought I'd have figured this letter the ramblings of a retired gangster looking to spice up his life with little excitement. The way the letter started, My dear little old cop cake. I had every mind to toss it in the trash. But something else got my attention. They're rarely ever signed. But this one ended Robespierre, and I doubt it's an imposter. No one would go against the most powerful group in the city, hoping to hide behind the name of some prankster clown. Like everyone else, I had no idea who Robespierre was or what he wanted. But there was no doubt that this guy was more than a little crazy. An arrogant psychopath. Could be dangerous. Definitely worth looking into. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting. So we're going to be going up against the Vargas now, and we just put them in power. And apparently we're going to be working for this guy called Robespierre. Sweet. Or, you know, well, working on tips based off of what he said. No, not that one. That one. Today we are trying you out, Dud Bob. <laughs> The Vargas. Aww. Uh, we need to hire a new uh, detective, isn't it? Oh, we got a request for an extra cop, maybe? Oh, no, of course, one of our cops died. Uh, yeah, we need a new cop on B shift. Stokes from B shift. We need a cop on B shift as well. Uh, Bork. Bork, 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 Bork. There we go. 
You've been found guilty of abusing your powers? What? Yep, coach's been taken away. Funeral. Pay the snitch. And I hire the extra officer. Okay. Oh no, I can hire the officer now. Sweet. Um, that's three. I'm already hired next to one over here, didn't I? Ooh, where do we want the extra officer? I think B shift. Grimes, you're on B shift. Chinatown. Here's the problem. Our investigations are kind of full right now. I can't take you off that. Oh, no, wrong one. I want the detectives. I mean, you're at home. I guess I'll just have to reassign them tomorrow. Eh, that'll do. Robbery. Bank Freeburg. Free armed robbers wearing masks enter the bank and demand the manager open the safe. Well, that is definitely a SWAT response. Samdi, up you go. Underwood and Vandal, and... We'll send... No, we'll hold back. Hold two cops back. I think I will declare you dead. Let's hire A shift. Leslie King. Probably should have requested an extra detective. I think that's going to be a next step. Assault. Trade union building. Uh, a young woman frightened to death just called in from the trade union. A drunk factory worker broke into the building. The same man who yesterday visited the union demanding a return to the money that was withheld from his salary over the past six years. The man is shouting and threatening to break through the service window. Okay. Uh, we'll send two people. He could be armed. You never know. And no, when you say we need more people, it's more serious than we thought. I can't help. Oh, okay. The bank is located in the city centre where there's a lot of traffic and civilians. Ooh, difficult choices. So we can block the exit with police cruiser. Take up comfortable firing positions at the main exit. Or sneak up the front winger and peek inside. I think we've got to peek inside. Wait until the robbers exit. I don't know how they're going to be exiting. There might be multiple exits. Get on the bull hunt. Attention, you're surrounded. I'll storm the building. That's going to result in a firefight, and I don't know if we're going to win that. I'm going to go, attention, you're surrounded. It worked. Hey. That calls for celebration. Not drinking now. After work, you can drink. Not right now. Uh, it's more serious than we thought. No. You've already got two people on the scene. Well done. Armed robbery. Just received an alert from the George Star. Six armed men wearing masks enter the premise demanding all the cash and the jewelry be placed in large garbage bag. Okay, yep. We're going to have a big response to that. Six armed men. Wow. The SWAT are getting a workout today. They didn't yesterday, but today? Today is SWAT day. Okay, so SWAT, Paddy Wagon, Samdi, Mail, Vandal, screw it, everyone. No, I have nothing for you. Uh, the act was buffeted by flying eggs thrown by someone from the, the audience. The assault was accompanied by shouts of shame, necrophilia, how dare you mock such a classic. According to the elderly theatre guard, the eggs are thrown by 10-year-old girls all dressed in white. My sweet Juliet the zombie. Okay, that's why. Um, they're ten-year-old girls. Have a ideal of the six people with automatic weapons, like trying to hold of a store or whatever. I don't know if they're automatic weapons. And you deal with the ten-year-old girls. 
a copy will be available in your area in the next five hours. How about that? No. I can't send you more. You literally have the entire precinct. We'll probably be back in time for the fight, though. Do 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 do. Fair enough escape. Yeah, like no civilians died though. That's the important part. Reception City Hall doesn't have enough protection. The mayor urgently requests these same officers. I don't have anyone in. A cat. Uh, sorry, a cat. A call just came in from a girl who went to her friends to have a barbecue out by the sawmill. When the food was almost ready, a group of drunk students started appearing, claiming it was their spot. A massive fight broke out. Allison, the paddy wagon. Sandy. Vandal, Underwood. That's probably enough. Keep two in reserve. Crime's gone up. After the, after the gang war, I think, you know, the gang war was keeping crime down. Maybe they're all too busy to have crime. Even then, like, the, this isn't a gang. So wh why did they suddenly decide? Oh, maybe they weren't going out and having barbecues because there's a gang war on. That makes sense. Armed robbery. Three armed thugs managed to rob the audience of a playhouse. Before the civilians realized what happened, the criminals already fled the scene. Until the last minute, everyone thought it was just part of the show. The cloak returned and the robbers left in a yellow school bus. I don't have SWAT. I used it already. I have the paddy wagon. And I've only got two people. I will, however, send two people. Will they be back in time, actually? Probably not. That went fine. Won't we'll be back in time. We're gonna send two people. If they ask for backup, we might just be able to get it. Homicide in the gas station. Oh, okay, well, I can need to respond to that one. An eyewitness reported that the man drove up to the gas station, got out and shot the guy behind the cat with an automatic rifle, and now he's just standing there quietly filling up his gas tank. The dude is crazy. My first thought is he's going to blow it up, but you can't actually blow up a full gas... Well, you... It's very hard to blow up a full uh, tank of petrol because there isn't any air in there. Actually, you're most likely to have an explosion uh, in a car crash when your tank is basically empty because it's just fumes. Um, I can't really respond to that. I'm going to wait and see what happens with this. The criminals abandoned it less than a mile from the suburban motel. Even late at night, finding the school bus wasn't too difficult. The criminal right, so they basically parked less than a mile from a suburban motel. So you can either search the woods, search the bus, or search the motel. Search the bus to begin with. I did click bus right. I guess the bus leads us to the motel. Three men threatened me with a gun when they said I have no more rooms. I put them in room already rented, but they won't be happy when they have a guest return. So order all civilians to return to the rooms and lock the doors, then begin the assault. I don't have enough people for that. Knock on the door, open up police. Don't have enough police for that. Try to trick the gunman. Who's in there? You're in our room! I might have enough police for that. Oh my god, it worked! Happy, 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 happy. Right, homicide. No new frames. Theft. Oh! <gasps> Yes, we got a new frame. Right. Okay, right. So, if it was the doctor, doctor grabs the bin bag, turns off the power, opens the door. Why is this not the right order? No, he's got, to, he's got to grab the bin bag first, right? And then he walks away with the bin bag. Th these are the frames that I need, right? So what order do they go in? He must grab the bin bag first. Okay, so the doctor... I say, keep saying he. It's a she, the, the farmer, the, the doctor, isn't it? Let me just check. But he wasn't there. It's a he. Okay. So... Maybe he turns up the lights first, then grabs the bin bag, 
opens the door. Yeah! Sweet. Now I've just got to go to all these million different things. I need to go to the homicide. It's more important. Because I don't have swap. They're on their way! Oh, you mean this? I didn't have a detective to send. I literally couldn't send anyone. Oh, that's a bit unfair. I literally couldn't take someone off an active investigation. Oh, was it meant to... No, I can't take him off an active investigation at the end of the day either. So no, we, we literally couldn't have done that. Which is really annoying because I really want to do that because it's like a main storyline kind of thing. Yeah, well done. I, I don't have a, much of a pay anymore. It's got cut in half, so Mafia can sell the damn thing for all I care. I'm really disappointed I didn't get to do the Robespierre thing. Uh, I need you to come in tomorrow. We need to cut. Um, cut. Sorry, we need to attack uh, the, the 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 pharmacist. I think it is. It's a physician. Yeah, the physician. Um, not attack. Arrest. That's the one. Uh, anyway, I've been Andrew Lissim. Uh, if you've enjoyed, please remember to like. If not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Oh, I have a cutscene. Long episode today. Oh, Jack, you always come back so late. What's wrong? Bad news? Good news, Jack. Laura is ready. Ready how? She's coming back? When? Not that fast, Jack. Laura's ready to talk. But if she's ready to talk, she's getting ready to come back. You just need to find the right words. Y you can find the right words, right, Jack? I'm not an idiot. I didn't ask for this, Jack. It's the middle of the night, and I'm alone on an old farm, 40 minutes away from anywhere, sat on a creaky porch, and now I'm getting snapped at. I came here so you could personally promise me that you'll be able to find the right words. So let's try again. You can find the right words, right, Jack? I can find the right words, Mrs. Markham. That's good to hear. Tomorrow night at 3 o'clock at the Octopus Restaurant. You know it? Yeah, but it's closed at night. Oh, I've arranged for them to be open. Don't be late. But don't come too early, either. Yeah. Mrs. Markham? Yeah? I should probably offer you some tea or something before you go. <laughs> Do you have any tea? No. Good night, Jack. More deaths than birth in Threeberg. Debbie's cafe charged with health and safety violation. Red cat rescues girl from rapist. Interesting. I've been Aerosim. Until next time. Stay shiny.